Hey guys, welcome to JPT. I'm Carson G, and this is Just Plain Tech. Today's video was actually recommended to me by one of our viewers. Thank you so much, by the way, if you're watching. If you ever have a question or an idea or any reason to recommend a video to me, don't hesitate to do it, guys. Just let me know down in the comments below. I love it when you guys recommend videos because, you know, it helps me better understand what videos you guys want, and I'll be happy to do any tutorial or review for you as long as I can. So yeah, don't hesitate to recommend videos. And this video that was recommended was how to install Puppy Linux on a USB flash drive. Not as a live CD, like as an actual computer that stores all your data that you can like take anywhere, basically. computer with an internet connection that runs Windows, Mac, or Linux, it doesn't really matter, and you need a flash drive. Alright, once you're on your desktop, go ahead and open up a web browser and type in puppylinux.com. And once you're here, just go here to downloads, scroll up just a bit, and do visit our download page and you're going to want either puppy linux bionic 32-bit or 64-bit if you don't know whether your computer is 32-bit or 64-bit it's probably 64-bit so just use 64-bit if you're not sure I'd recommend getting one of those and down here it says download here and it gives us a link we're gonna go ahead and click that link and again, 32-bit, click that. 64-bit, click that. All right. Now, and just click the top ISO right here. And then it will download it. And we'll format it using a software called Etcher. Okay, so now if we go to our file manager, I have a lot of stuff downloaded. But as you can see here, we have Bionic Pup. Now we'll go ahead and open up Etcher. We'll click Flash from File and we will select Bionic Pup. Oh, here is where we need to plug in our flash drive. There we go. Our 32 gigabyte flash drive. And once this is done, you are going to take it out of your computer, shut down your computer, then put it in your computer, and then turn on your computer, and then it should work. All right, so here we are on the Puppy Linux Live CD. Feels so alive. Okay, so now what we are going to do is we are going to go to system g parted partition manager we'll just do all drives and it will bring us here this is my hard drive which i definitely do not want to modify at all whatsoever here go to our flash drive mine's a 32 gigabyte flash drive this is 28 gigs that's close enough it's definitely closer than two terabytes to 32 so yeah this is my 32 gig flash drive. I'm gonna go up here to device, create partition table, set it as MS-DOS and we'll just click apply. And there we go, we completely erased it. So Puppy Linux loads into RAM. The reason Puppy Linux is still working is because it's all in the RAM. But if you turn it off, then it will be erased. It won't be able to boot it back up. So basically, we're gonna fix that but make it into a partition that we can store user data on. So we'll click new and we will set the file system to ext2. Click apply. All right, so yay, all operations successfully completed. So we'll just do that. Now we can close this out. Now we go to menu, 
set up puppy installer. Right here we'll click universal installer, we'll click USB flash drive, and so now it might have a few different ones here. We are just going to do the one that says Sandus Cruiser Spark, which is my flash drive, and then the size. So make sure it says your flash drive, and then your flash drive size. So Sandus Cruiser Spark 32 gigs. So well, close enough to 32 gigs. So I'll click that. And here is where you double check. There should only be one partition, and it should be EXT2. And double check the size. So we'll just do install puppy to SDF1. Okay. Now, here is where we need to select the puppy live CD ISO. Alright, so now we're going to go to menu, P mount. Now we are going to have to mount our ISO if it asks you to do this. So we already have it downloaded on our hard drive. So we're just going to mount our hard drive. Chances are you'll probably have like one or two partitions. But I have a multi boot on here. So I downloaded it on Linux Mint, which is on Dev SDA 7. So I'll just go ahead and mount that. And if we go double check home, Carson navigate to where you downloaded it and uh, there we go right there there it is so now I go to file system MNT SDA 7 home downloads and bionic pup 64 there we go we can close that out now Alright, oh, slight problem. It seems that partition SDF1 does not have its boot flag set. So we're going to have to set that. We'll click here, G parted. And we will just right click this partition. Manage flags. Boot right here, we'll just click that. Now we'll close out. There we go. It's right there, so we'll close out G parted. And it says press enter key to continue. We're going to do just that. Um we do want to wipe all files so anything that's on your flash drive is now completely gone make sure you've backed up everything you want to back up obviously well you already did that before you flashed it but we're still going to I don't know just press a key like D or something and then press enter all right now it says finished press enter key there we go so now you can reboot well, actually, first, what we're going to do is we're going to do menu, exit, shut down. We will click save, administrator, continue. All right, now we're going to want to select our flash drive, SDF1. Make sure it's EXT2 and the same size as your flash drive. Normal. Okay. You know, and we can name it, whatever. And we will do yes, save. 